Graphing linear inequalities. The skills used in graphing linear inequalities are basically the same as those needed for graphing linear functions. There are, however, some few key differences, and this presentation will attempt to focus on those key differences. The simplest linear inequalities are those already in y-intercept form. So let's consider this linear inequality, y is less than or equal to 2x minus 3. The first thing we need to do is draw the graph by marking a point at the y-intercept in this case negative 3. Next we need to draw the boundary line by using the rise over run of 2. We have a slope of 2 so that's a rise of 2 a run of 1. So we go we draw a line segment up 2 and then 1 to the right over 1. And then we draw the boundary line by using that rise over run and this is called a boundary line instead of a line of solutions because the line marks the boundary between the set of correct solutions and the non-solutions. The first thing to consider about a boundary line is what type of line to draw. There are two kinds of lines we can draw. We can draw a solid line or a dotted line. If we use a dashed line, when the inequality symbol is either less than or greater than, so it doesn't have that little line underneath it, it's a dashed line for uh, less than and greater than because the points on the boundary line are not part of the solution set. However, as, as in this case, if the symbol is either less than or greater than, meaning either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we need to make the boundary line solid to indicate the line contains part of the solution set. Since the inequality above has the symbol less than or equal to, uh, less than the boundary line is part of the solution set and should remain solid as originally drawn. The next and last thing we need to do is determine is to mark the side of the boundary line that contains the solutions by shading either above or below the line. And since the inequality states that y is less than or equal to, we need to shade below the boundary line. And finally, we need to do one more thing. We need to test the solution by letting the point 0, 0 be tested. We substitute 0 for x and 0 for y, and we see what happens. And so here we've substituted, and we bring it down. We have 0 is less than or equal to negative 3. And since 0 is not less than or equal to negative 3, 0, 0 is not part of the solution set, which is how the inequality was drawn, because the 0, 0, the origin, is not in that shaded area. So the inequality is drawn there is correct. And so this is correctly graphed. Next let's graph another linear inequality. 3x plus 5y is greater than 15. And here we have it not in y-intercept form but in standard form. So what do we have to do first to graph? We need to solve for y just like we would for an equation in standard form. And we're going to add or subtract the x term. Here we have an x term of 3x so we're going to need to subtract 3x from both sides. And we do this. We bring down everything else. We have 5y is greater than 15 minus 3x. So we divide by the coefficient of y. And the coefficient of y, the number next to y, is 5. So we divide everything by 5. So we cancel and simplify. We get y is greater than 3 minus 3 fifths x. Now we have the inequality in y-intercept form. We need to graph it. We start with the y-intercept, which is 3. Draw a dot there. We need to use the slope to form a boundary line. We have a negative 3 fifths, so our rise is negative 3. We go 3 down from that y-intercept, and our run is 5, so we draw a line segment to the right, 5, and we go ahead and mark our second point, and we draw our boundary line. In this case, it's y is greater than, so we use a dashed line. And do we shade above or below the line? Well, it says y is greater than. Greater than means up. So we're going to shade upward. And here it is, shaded upward. Now let's test, uh, it looks good, let's test our solution set by trying 0, 0 again. So we replace the y with 0 and the x with 0. And since uh, we sh shade it here, we have 3 times 0 plus 5 times 0, this is the original one, is 
not greater than 15. And we see that that's not part of the solution set, which is the way we shaded it. Now let's try the one above here. What's our first step? Well, we're going to get rid of that 5x, subtracting it. Yeah, our x term is 5x. We subtract it because it's positive 5x. We cancel terms on the left and bring everything else down. We have negative 5y is greater than 20 minus 5x. So we divide both sides by the coefficient of y, which is negative 2. It's not negative 2y. We divide by negative 2. And here we simplify, and we have y is greater than or equal to negative 10 plus 2.5x. We did something above in our last step by solving for y. There's another key difference in how we solve inequalities compared with solving equations. And that is, whenever we divide or multiply by both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the direction of the inequality needs to be reversed. And so instead of being y is greater than or equal to negative 10 plus 2.5x, we need to change that to y is less than or equal to 2.5x minus 10. And so now we draw the boundary line. We use the slope. We start with our y-intercept. And that's going to be negative 10. Here it is marked. And we have our rise over run. It's going to be 5 over 2. And we draw our second point at the end of that rise and run. And we can draw a boundary line. Now it's greater, it's less than or equal to. So we need a solid line. Here we draw a solid line. Now which way do we shade? Well, it's less than. So we have to shade below the line. There it is. Finally, we need to test our solution by picking 0, 0 and seeing if it works. And here we have uh, 0, 0 not part of the solution, so we test it. And we see 0 is greater than or equal to 20. That's not true. So we know 0, 0 is not part of the solution set. Solution set we shaded it correctly. Now, algebra students are notorious for hating fractions. Let's do a nasty problem with negative signs and fractions. Here we have negative 1 half x minus 1 third y is less than or equal to negative 2. Well, we're going to add or subtract the x term. So we have negative 1 half x. So we need to add 1 half x to both sides. And... We place 1 half x under both sides. We cancel the x terms on the left and bring down negative 1 third y's, listener, or equal to negative 2 minus 1 half x. What is the coefficient of y? Well, it's negative 1 third. So we just divide everything by negative 1 third. We've got to make sure we wrap those fractions in parentheses, but we can do that. And we have y is less than or equal to. 6 plus 1.5x. So we mark that point. And since the slope of 1.5 is 3 over 2, mark a rise of 3, a run of 2, and we mark the second point. Now we draw the boundary line. It's less than or equal to, so it's going to be what? Solid. Let's draw the boundary line. Do we shade above or below the boundary line? Wait, we forgot something. Didn't we divide by a negative number? We divided by negative one-third, right, to solve for y. So we have to switch this sign to y is greater than or equal to 1.5x plus 6. We shade above that line, and we go test with 0, 0. And substituting 0 is less than or equal to negative 2. That's not true. Now, if we made a mistake and not changed the sign, we would have been able to pick up our mistake and change it anyway. So that's the importance of testing. So we know it's correct. So what does that tell us here? We don't need to be afraid of fractions. If we, if we add or subtract the x term, divide by coefficient of y, we don't have to be worried about fractions or anything. So to summarize, treat the linear, linear inequalities just as you would linear functions except for three things. It's not a line of solutions. It's a solid or dashed boundary line. We shade our above or below the boundary line. And third, we need to change the direction of the inequality if you divide by a negative number. We hope this has been useful.
Thanks for coming to see us.